<laughs> there he is. How's it going, eh? I believe the word that doctors used to describe my prognosis was excellent, considering they took a foot out of my colon. With or without the shoe? Ho, oh, oh. ho. So when you out of here? As soon as my bowels stop moving again. Listen, I, uh, I've been working security for Mrs. Hornby, and now she's saying she got a necklace missing. Yeah? That ain't all she's missing. She ever mentioned that to you? Missing jewelry? She's always misplacing something. Which you never looked into. Andy, this is a woman who can kill two hours playing guess which hand the candy's in. I talked to her maid. She seemed clean. Marta wouldn't steal anything. What about her business manager, uh, Corey Beecham? What about him? What's his story? He on the up and up? You're looking to strangle the golden goose that I dropped in your lap? Mr. Beecham's paying you to keep her company. Start getting Snoopy and Mr. Beecham will bounce you out of there. Mrs. Hornby's paying me 400 a shift for security. 400? I only got two. How'd you get 400? A little uh, accidental negotiation went on. 400 a shift. And you're coming to get me to help you screw it up? Eddie. Don't be stupid and go ruining the only gold mine you'll ever stumble on. Goodbye. Good luck with your first crap. So, uh, you and Rita had a chance to work together? We've shared a couple of cases, yeah. How long have you been to the 15th? What, uh, three months now. You married? No. Take your time. Plan on it. Must be out there tearing it up, I bet, huh? I don't know about that, but, uh, not complaining. You want a pager for you, or...? She usually leaves herself around. Hey, honey. Hey, Don, what are you doing here? Oh, I forgot to have you sign those refinance papers this morning. Oh, we should have left them on my desk. Yeah. I'll see you tonight. Where you been? A follow-up interview with an assault victim. Yeah, but turn on your phone. And they make you turn your phones off in hospitals. I must have forgot to turn it back on. I'll see you tonight. Which hospital was this? do this in here. Just tell me where you were. Don, you're being paranoid again, and I can't deal with it. See, nothing's right changed. It's just like it was when you were in Vice. I... Just tell me. Don, I will not have this conversation. What's that all about? I don't know. See you at home tonight. Morning. Hey. I'm sorry, Tony. Just trying to clear up a little misunderstanding here. Right. Clear it up at home. Making lieutenant go into your head? You need to leave Reed alone and get your ass out of here. Why are you so interested in my wife? Is there something going on here I should know about? Don. Please go. I'll call you later. Team squad, Detective Clark. All right, thanks. Hello, my oh. boss. Two DOAs on first seven. All right, go ahead. I'll face the others and have them meet you down. Find me later. Sorry you had to see that. Not a problem. You okay. Yeah. Bye. Customer from the taco joint made it this far. Another DOA inside. Anything? Andy's got a witness in there. Double? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Pardon me, senor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's a traffic condition out here. They could use some help. She was weeping. I understand, but they need help moving the traffic. I played dead. Yeah, that saved your life. What did the guy look like who did the shooting? A white guy? Dark hair? I just... I, just, I laid down and played dead. Could you identify him? He's still in shock. All right, Jeff. Uh, we're going to have you go sit on the ambulance for a while. You can lay down if you want. I, I don't want to lay down. Well, I just want to make sure that you're okay. Then you come over to the station house with us and help us find out who did it. Okay. 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 It's a nephew to the owner. He was working a register. Yeah, he probably wouldn't give it up. How about the one outside? Just eating there. We'll start a canvas. Yeah. They have gotten away with hundred bucks? If that. It's traffic cop. All she does is hug old ladies. Excuse me. Can we talk to you? Felner. What are you doing? She was just falling. 
Your job's supposed to keep the traffic moving. I won't forget that. Anything in there about witnesses? Um, nothing conclusive. Where's your radio? I forgot it at the precinct. Which is where? Where's your command? I should be helping with the traffic. Excuse me. Where do you work? I'm a traffic officer. What house? Can I see your ID card? Oh, it's with my radio. What's your tax number? Uh, 719... I have it in my car. I'll be right back. Stay right <laughs> This is a fake gun. Please let me go. Please let me go to my car. All right, take it easy. Just, just don't, don't grab me. Just take it easy, and there'll be no reason to. Okay? I'm, I'm just trying to help. Come on, we'll talk about it at the station house. Take a seat. Is your real name Fellner? Yes, Louise Fellner. Tell us what you were doing on the street today, Louise. Well, like I said before, I, I was just trying to help, with all respect. Where'd you get the badge and uniform? At a store in Chinatown. How'd you happen on that crime scene? I was monitoring my police scanner, which I bought secondhand for $13. How long have you been dressing up as a cop? A little while. Why are you doing it? To ease suffering. Although I would never interfere with true police business. I just wanted to talk to people and write down how they were feeling. And when they felt better, I was just going to walk away. Have you ever been locked up, Louise? No, ma'am. Ever been in the hospital? Been treated for depression? No. Am I going to be arrested? Impersonating a cop's a serious offense. Which I respect completely. But do you understand I was really only trying to help? We understand. And maybe we can work something out after we get a few things confirmed. Where do you live? With my mom. Write the address and the number. We'll give her a call. <laughs> she never answers the phone. Louise, work with us or go to jail. I am working with you, of course. And again, I am so sorry. How's our witness? Uh, he's still pretty traumatized. I've seen one of the DOAs get his brains blown out right in front of him. I was staring down the barrel himself. Name's Jeff Gamble. No record, works as a janitor. Greg and Baldwin are bringing him in. Think he's gonna be any help by being the shooter? Yeah, but we're letting him calm down. Get his head straight. Think he could provide a sketch? Yeah, probably worth a shot. You ever see the sketch of the Zodiac Killer? It was of a 300-pound black guy, and it turned out to be that skinny white prick. When I tell the chief of these that we're doing everything we can, I want to mean it. Yeah, we're on it. Josh, I'm taking her up to the crib to get her situated. I need you to keep an eye on her. Sure. This is a police impersonator? It came off pretty harmless. We're gonna look into her. I got set up on a blind date. He penned you a love poem? No, he, uh, he looks forward to meeting me. What's he do? Lawyer. You're still going out with him? Friend picks me up. Some friend. Hey, what's up? What the hell are you doing here? I'm selling magazine subscriptions. What do you think? How are you still living in this city? One day at a time, you know, like everybody else. None of the people that you gave up came after you? Well, you killed the Ghazi, so problem solved. What about that guy, uh, Giglio, you did the robbery with? Dead. He got shanked in the shower the second day at Rikers. Good for you, Julian. Surviving like a cockroach. But we're not forgetting you helped bury my old partner. I didn't know that that was your partner. Yeah, well, looking at you gives me bad memories. So hit the bricks or they'll hit you. You got two guys whacked down at Lupe's Cantina this morning? What about it? Oh, why, uh, yes. I would love a cup of coffee. Come <clears throat> right. You sure? I'd hate to give you bad memories. Yeah, push it, Julian. That'd be a really good idea. Do you know how much money I lost out on when I gave you a Ghazi for killing your partner? You don't want to revisit that, Julian. Just humor me for a minute, because it has to do with why I'm here. In that, when someone gives information on a cop being killed, that person collects money from an organization called Cop Shot. From the mayor's office, from the police union, from the newspapers, from your local benefactors like your Donald Trumps. Yeah, yeah, you saved yourself five years in prison for giving up that information. Yeah, but it also has opened my eyes to the cash that's out there for info on horrendous crimes, which I will absolutely not be shafted on this time. I did my homework, fellas, so don't even try it. Tell us what you know, Julian, before you get struck. Struck, huh? Let me tell you, I had nothing to do with those murders today. I just heard some things. 
So you don't have my nuts in a vice this time. And when you realize that, you call me. The owner of the restaurant's nephew was killed. He's putting up 15 grand. I'd like to see written confirmation of that. Stay away from me. Stay away from me! The offer's valid, and it's yours if you just get out of your own way and tell us what you know. Okay. And I want 2,000 from Crime Stoppers. Julian! Right, okay. So this guy that I know from this OTB down on Bleak, he comes in this morning with a look in his eyes of sheer terror. Keeps saying, something went down, man, something went down. Now, Lupe's Cantina had come up in prior conversation as the place where this guy would eat at regularly, and which I had heard at that point was earlier robbed with two guys killed. So I say, oh, did something go down at Lupe's? He's so stunned that literally his mouth was open that I had put the two together. And then he glares me in the eye and he says, I better keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Which I did until now. His name? It's Gio Deloria. He lives over on 7th Street. I used to go by there a lot because I had to drop things off. I, I know. Okay. I can better avoid Joe's and meters. All right, we'll be downstairs. We'll be on Louise. Uh, no priors, no warrants. You contact her mother? No answer at the apartment, but Louise said she might not pick up. We're gonna run by and see if she can give us a sense of the girl. If she's harmless and just nutty, maybe we'll give her a walk. Well, we did get hip to her because she wouldn't stop hugging people. Detective McDowell? That's your call, I'm kicking her, but get her a change of clothes. I want her badge, uniform, gun, voucher. When we talk to her mom, we'll get her some clothes. I got a minute now, if you want. I got a quick call to make, then we'll talk. Uh, I eat anything, really. I. You make the call, I, I better get going. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you then. Did Julian give you something? Maybe. At the lawyer? Picking a restaurant. Just make sure the place is well lit or the shyster will make off with your wallet. Do you have a problem with this blind date? No. Why? You've made a lot of comments. I, uh, I don't like the idea of you building a relationship with my son that maybe gets tossed out the window because of uh, some guy who comes along. What are you talking about? His mom died. Uh, my ex-wife's working, so uh, she's not around like she was. And he felt uh, abandoned by them. I don't want that happening with you. Andy, I'm not even supposed to babysit tonight. I'm talking about down the line. I will always have time for Theo. You know what? Don't put yourself out. Andy. Let you know what's happening. Okay. Thank you. What happened today with your husband? Is that a recent occurrence? We're working it out. I'll ask again. Is that a recent occurrence? No, but it's nothing I can't handle. And besides, I know you're friends with Don, so I don't want to get you involved. Involved? I come in today and you and Don are causing a scene in the hallway. Don being the guy that called in a favor I owed him. You being that favor. I'm involved, Rita. Got it. So I want to know what the hell's going on. Don's overprotective. Sometimes he can get paranoid. He wants to know where I am all the time. Are you all right? Overall? Yeah. Well, I hope you guys work it out. But that flare-up this morning this doesn't happen again in my squad. That's all. If Don pressured you into getting me assigned here and you wouldn't have taken me if you didn't, or you're not happy with my work, I'll transfer out today. Your work's not the problem. If this is a runaround, Julian sent a sign because he got dollar signs in his eyes. Do we have enough to take the door? No, and there's no use risking our jobs and this case off with Julian spinning. Okay, thank you. This uh, Geo guy's got a girlfriend over on 6th. Uh, she's had multiple complaints against him for a battery. Come on, let's take a look at that location. All right. We'll sit on this place in case he shows. Not taking a door down with a drop of a hat. Andy's come a long way. Yeah. You're awful quiet lately there, partner. Yeah, I just got a lot going on. Wife and girlfriend type stuff? That's what I'm sensing. Yeah, that type. You know, there was a song, uh, this is before your time, when you're in love with a beautiful woman. Leo Sayer, I think, sang it. And, and the song basically told it like it is. It's hard. Involves a whole new set of circumstances of dating a plain gal. <laughs> now, Dr. Hook, he sang it. 
I look for it. And a beautiful woman you work with? I've been there. Have you? I don't know if anyone ever told you about our former PAA, Donna Abandando, how beautiful she was. No. Knockout. I mean, gifted. Physically. And her and me, you know, I was going somewhere with that. I got what you're saying, Greg. And I appreciate it. Just give us space. You guys will be all right. Mrs. Fellner? You smell something? Is everything okay? Uh, police, ma'am. We'd like to speak with Mrs. Fellner. Do you know where she is? I haven't seen her in a while. Hours? Days? I guess uh, a couple of weeks. Is the super on site? Uh, you need a key? I I've got one. Please. Her daughter's always losing her key, so that gave me a spare. Do they, uh, do they keep it pretty neat, or does the garbage pile up in here? Mm. It's always tidy. Mm. Um, just stay here. Open the door. What's going on? Open the door. Lisa Verticon? Yeah? Looking for Giovanni Deloria. Oh, no. No? Sorry. So four times you called the cops last year because he was beating you? That was what? Okay, so you're police and you're looking for Gio. Is that what Get him out! Gio! Get him down the head! Don't move! Freeze! Get him! Oh. Go! Oh. Okay. Drop it! Oh. You got him? Yeah. Let go of me! Shut up! Who's sitting on the least filner? She's asleep. Son of a bitch. Josh! I was just gone a minute. I had to go to the can. I'll look downstairs. Yeah. Any particular reason you'd want to run from the cops today, Gio? I wasn't running. You got two knots on your head to say otherwise. I was brushing my teeth. The only thing I heard was Lisa scream my name, so I went for my gun. If I knew you were cops, I would have laid down. What, I'm gonna kill cops? Where were you this morning at 10? At Lisa's. You stopped by Lupe's Cantina any time in the day? No. Hey, Gio, now's the time to talk about what happened, not after we bring in our witnesses and they pick you out of a lineup. Pick me out for what? Robbing that restaurant, killing those two people. That's crazy. And who's ever saying I did it's lying. You make us walk out of this room and do a lineup. We will make sure that every charge sticks to you down to criminal possession of a weapon. And we will make sure that you serve every charge consecutively. I have been in my girlfriend's apartment all day, helping to put together stupid-ass gift favors for her sister's wedding. I didn't rob nobody. I didn't kill nobody. And that's the truth. Oh, I can power to see this head to. Hey, Jim. Nancy. This is my partner, John Clark. Yeah. Jim's retired off the job and works security at City Trust Bank. Uh, this is on uh, Hornby? Yeah, he pulled some records for me. You feel a little louder? Hey, give me a break, huh? You got the lineup? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, a detective? Uh, Eddie Gibson called. He said, the loaf has landed. I'm heading home. He said you'd know what that meant. Great. What happened with you? Yeah. Night, Jim. Gio? Uh, you wouldn't go. Calling in Haywood to run a lineup. The in the wind. How? Josh was supposed to be watching her in the crib. He, uh, he stepped out for a second. Why, anyone see her leave? 
She still had her cop gear. And she snagged a radio from Annie Crime. We put out an FATN message to look for a female in a police uniform. Yeah, if it gets broadcast, the press will eat it up. We specifically said it's not to go out over the air. Any word from the Emmy on her mother? It's looking like a heart attack, but he can't rule out trauma until he finishes the autopsy. The neighbors say if Felner had a history of violence? Not specifically, but she did say felner has been in and out of mental institutions her whole life. I hope Josh Astrakhan's wearing his shoes out looking for this lady. Yeah, he's on the street. We're going to join him. Go on. The drama. Go, by the way. Yeah, I know. Let me see what you got. And I don't know that kid. He's my partner. That's all you need to know. How about Mr. Featherfingers answering the phone? Jim, I'm telling you, don't worry about it. Hmm? You see this lady hasn't been out of her apartment since the attacks. Right. Well, she's had major ATM activity since then. Plus two credit cards averaging 15 grand a month in charges. Who's using the credit cards? Corey Beecham. How long has he been her business manager? I don't know. Plus there's some decent sized checks written for cash and endorsed by Beecham on the back. It's all these wire transfers to Houston Brownstone Partnership. That's a real estate deal set up by Beecham for your client. How much has been wired to it? A million and a half over the last year. He's listed as managing partner. She's limited. That a red flag? Worth looking into. Can you look into it for me? Yeah. Didn't want this job anyway. Great salary for benefits. Just do me this favor, all right? I'll see if I can get some detail on the account. I'll pull the title. I'd appreciate it. Can I keep these? If you lose them, I lose my job. They can have these documents when they can pry them from my cold, dead hands. Just don't lose them. Mm -hmm. right. This guy coming down, he's our only witness? Well, we got an informant, but I wouldn't look for him to do much on the stand. Hey, how is he? Still shook up. Uh, this witness saw the two guys get killed right in front of him, plus he got shot himself. Hey. Jeff Gamble. Hi, Jeff. I'm Valerie Haywood with the DA's office. Hey. We're going to lift the shade and ask you to take a look at the suspect. Yeah, they already told me. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Take your time. Him. He shot those people. Which number? Three. He shot me, too. Okay. Kick number three, kick everybody else. How you doing? I'm okay. Well, what's going on? I still have some time to make a decision, and I'm using that time. Well, when you figure out how much my life's going to change, you let me know. Right here, Johnny. Hey. Kid went right to him. Didn't hesitate. Is ID gonna be enough in case the perp doesn't go? I hope so. So the informant's no good? So he had to help us with the Sorensen thing. Julian Pisano? Yeah. What'd he give us on this? Our perp let it slip that he did it this morning, but uh, if we can keep Julian out of it, it'd be worth our while not to burn him out in court. But if we need Julian's testimony, we use it. I'm not gonna let a double murderer go just because you think Julian might be able to help us out with something else down the line. We're clear on that. Hey, Dad. What the hell's going on? Two people got killed, Dad. And, and, and he shot me, too. What's going on? Lieutenant Rodriguez. Fuck him. He raised a fine son. Dad, I, I had to play dead so he wouldn't kill me. Can I take him home now? Why don't you have a seat a second, Jeff? Jeff saw a double murder. He uh, stepped up and I need the shooter. Glad he could help. He got grazed himself, so he's uh, he's still traumatized. It might be a little while before he calms down. He's fine. No, he's still a little shaken up. You mean like not all there? Yeah. He fried his brain out sniffing glue when he was 16. That's all you're gonna get. Ask him what day it is. Go ahead. Jeff, what day is it today? Sunday. But what day of the week is it? Monday, Tuesday? Oh, man. Can I take him home now? Sure. We'll get in touch if we need anything. You got a second? If it sounded like I'm unaware of your part in this or that I don't care, then I came across wrong. Then how should I take it? I'm waiting each day totally out of the loop while you decide where they're going to keep our kid. 
Can you just be there for me? Yeah. All right. I'm here. You got picked out, Gio. So? Come on, sit down. I'm gonna give you a chance to talk about it now. I thought if I got picked out, I wasn't gonna get any chances. That must have changed, I guess, huh? What's your girlfriend's name who assaulted me at the apartment? Lisa? Assaulted you? Come on. And the little girl that was there, is she you and Lisa's daughter? Yeah. What's your daughter's name? Haley. Lisa, good mom to Haley? You love your daughter? You want Lisa to continue being her mom? You're not actually bringing my daughter into this, are you? We got you resisting arrest and holding an unlicensed firearm. We got Lisa locked up for assaulting me. And if that ain't enough, I'll notify the Bureau of Child Welfare with allegations of abuse on both you and Lisa against your daughter. And Haley will be in foster care by the end of business today, and she will stay in the system, and neither one of you will ever get her back. We know you killed two people today, Gio. You made your move, we'll make ours. You can't do that. Watch me. And the only way your daughter stays out of this is by you telling us what went wrong today. How do I know you still won't go after her if I do talk? All we care about is the two guys that you killed. And once that's tied up, Lisa gets released and she takes Haley home. What happened? I eat there. The owner don't make the bank drop till the next day. I got debts. Kid at the register. Never seen her before. Starts screaming, freaking out. Wouldn't give it up. I was high. I got pissed off. It got out of hand. Write it down. Did Julian give me up? Julian, somebody in on this with you? Just some guy I know. But the only guy I knew I was planning on doing it. I mean, what difference does it make now, right? I did the right thing and cop to it. Just tell me if it was him who gave me up. I don't know no Julian. What's up? Tell us again how you came to find out about the murders today. I told you all this already. Stay away from me. I need it! Gio was saying that he told you about it before it went down. Oh, he's lying. Oh, you know what? You know what? One day we were sitting around between races talking about our dreams cause, you know, like I do. And one of the dozen or so places that he talked about was uh, Lupe's Cantina because he noticed that the owner didn't do the bank drop until the next day. So when I heard that Lupe's had gotten hit and that two guys were dead, I came right down. So you lied about seeing him today? No, I did see him today, and he was freaked, and I did ask him if he hit Lupe's. I did not lie about that. You see, the problem, Julian, is you knowing about a crime before it happened. Uh, he mentioned one day that it would be an easy score. He didn't roll out blueprints and then tell me what day and what time he was going to do it. And he sure the hell didn't say that he was going to take out everybody in the place when he did. If I find out that you knew more than you're saying. I don't! And here I am thinking that I'm going to get an accolade or something from you guys for helping out. So what's up? Am I going to get the reward money that is rightfully mine? Yeah, we'll get in touch with the owner's attorney about the reward. He may want us to deal with you directly. Fifteen grand? Yeah, that's right. And the two thousand from Crime Stoppers. You'll get that, all right, in a, in a day or two. <laughs> you know, I woke up today knowing something good was going to happen. Get this guy out of here. Fifteen Squad, PA Irvin. Lieutenant? So, tomorrow, like, AM? We'll call you. Do you have the uh, correct spelling of my name for when they cut the checks? We'll get it off your lengthy rap sheet. You know, I'm gonna be in the area tomorrow anyhow, so I'll just drop by, say, 11 o'clock. Does that work for you guys? Each word out of your mouth from here on out is an extra week till you get the checks. We got 1013, cop shot at 5th Street Market. Let's be careful out there. Police impersonator from this morning. What happened? We responded to a sign on alarm with the purple ready boogie. She's not a cop. Yeah, we know that. What happened? The owner here was getting stuck up. She ran in the middle of it. She saved my life. Uh, the guy was psycho, twitching his gun while I got the money together. But then she comes in trying to stop it. That could be me. She tried to stop a robbery. Oh, my God. Louise. 
How's it going? Take off your shoes. We are having a sock hop tonight. I looked into your missing necklace. I found it. It was behind the dresser. Um, all right. Uh, no, just stop dancing for a second and listen to me, all right? You see, how it works is when you come to me saying that you got stuff missing, I look into everybody, not just who you think it is. Like a good detective should, but I found the necklace. Yeah, good. And <clears throat> in looking into everybody who had access to your apartment when I thought it was stolen, I looked into your business manager. I found the necklace, but I appreciate your thoroughness. It's very reassuring. Take off your shoes. Now, in looking at Corey, I made some phone calls, and I, uh, I got access to your bank records. There's some inconsistencies. With what? With your money. But Corey handles all that. Do you know he's using an ATM card in your name? He's got two credit cards that you're paying for. Corey wouldn't do that. Did you ever hear of a Houston Brownstone partnership? No. This is getting very tedious. It's an account that Corey funneled a million and a half of your dollars into last year. How long has this guy been in your life? Three years. And how'd he get into your life? He's my late husband's nephew. He went to business school. He's very smart. He takes care of me. Well, I'm going to be looking into him. No, you won't. Mrs. Hornby, your step-nephew is leeching money off of you. You just do not come into my apartment, a cop, and try to turn my life upside down. All right, you want to stick your head in the sand, you go ahead. But another year of this, and you better make an appointment to play piano at the King Solomon Home for the Aged. When's the last time you signed anything? There's no mail coming in. Because of the anthrax. Who told you this? Corey? You're making me very upset. Good. You need to be. You need to step up and, and uh, take account of your finances, your life. And you need to go sit by the door. So you don't want me looking into this. You're willing to take your chances, huh? Oh, just go ahead then. So I said, go ahead, take your shot. Even though I know what's coming, when I hear 260, it's still, I mean, it's not insulting, but it's discouraging. Right. Anyway, it worked out, and that's enough corporate talk. Tell me about your day. Any shoot 'em ups? I actually had a tough case today. Let's hear it. Well, we had an emotionally disturbed woman in for impersonating a police officer, and uh, later in the day she got shot in a stick up. Hmm. She was a real sad case. Was she really nuts? I guess. But I imagine she was heading for trouble dressing like a cop. Yeah, but she might have been okay if, uh, if we handled her differently, so. Hindsight. Always 2020, right? Right. It's the same in corporate law. Is the woman okay? She died. You know, I had a case last year, <clears throat> given a few different judgment calls, might have really changed the way we think about telecommunications. Are you all right? Actually, I, uh, I'm not feeling too well right now. Are you feeling sick? I got a really bad headache. I don't mean to be rude, but I, I, I think I'd better head home and just um, call into bed. You might feel better if you eat. Sorry. Um, let me uh, let me kick him for the wine. Uh, I'll stay and finish. Okay. Do you need a cab? No, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Feel better. Get it. All right, Sipowitz residence. Remember. Sipowitz residence. Hi, sweetheart. It's Connie. Hi, Connie. Are you coming over soon? I want you to come and tickle me. I'll be there tomorrow night. Is your dad there? He's right here. Bye bye. Bye bye. No, oh, hey. It was Connie. Why'd you hang up? 
Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. <laughs> no, I, I, I knew he was going to hang up as soon as I said bye-bye. You all right? Yeah, I, I just... I just wanted to check in. Uh, <clears throat> your date go okay? I bailed out in the middle. But I saw her? No, but... That's sort of why I'm calling. Um, are we fighting about something? Hang on a minute, okay? Okay, kiddo. Time for bed. Ten minutes. No, no, no. No, no, no. Come on, let's go. I'll come in and we'll read. <clears throat> Listen, Connie, uh... I'm, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I got no right making you guilty having a social life. Andy, I didn't call looking for an apology. I know, but I, I had a wrong reaction. Was that maybe on account of you considering me a good part of your lives? And not wanting to see it go away. That's good to hear. Where are you? You need a ride home? Oh, I got my car. I just wanted to make the call. <sighs> I needed something to make me feel good. I'm, I'm gonna head home. I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.